Hi, this is David Voss, CCIE 11372. And in this video, you're going to learn about designing quality of service. Specifically, we're going to be going over the following categories of quality of service. Classification, congestion management, link efficiency mechanisms, and then traffic shaping and policing. Let's talk about quality of service at a higher level and then discuss the quality of service concepts that Cisco wants you to know for the CCDA exam. Quality of service is a tool for managing a WAN's available bandwidth. Now, quality of service does not and bad, add bandwidth, but it helps you make better use of what you have. If you have chronic congestion issues, Quality of service should not be the primary answer to resolving that problem. You need to add more bandwidth. However, by prioritizing traffic using quality of service, you can make sure that your most critical traffic gets the best treatment and available bandwidth in times of congestion. One popular quality of service technique is to classify your traffic based on a specific protocol type or matching access list and then giving a policy treatment to that specific class. You can define many classes to match or identify your most important traffic classes for example video or voice and then the remaining unmatched traffic then uses a default class which is the traffic that can be treated as best effort. So let's begin with classification. For a flow to have priority, it must first be identified and marked. Both of these tasks are referred to as classification. The following are popular technologies which support classification. NBAR, it's a technology that uses deep packet content inspection to identify network applications. So an advantage of NBAR is that it can recognize applications even when they do not use standard network ports. Also, it matches fields at the application layer. Before NBAR, classification was limited to layer 4 TCP and UDP port numbers, but NBAR has changed that. Next is CAR, Committed Access Rate, and uses an ACL to set precedence and allows customization of the precedence assignment by the user uh, source or destination IP address or even application type. Next let's talk about congestion management. There are two types of output queues that are available on routers, hardware and software. The hardware queue simply uses FIFO, first in, first out. But the software queue schedules packets first and then places them in the hardware queue. Now keep in mind that the software queue is only used during periods of congestion. The software queue uses quality of service techniques such as priority queuing, custom queuing, weighted fair queuing, class-based weighted fair queuing, low latency queuing, and traffic shaping and policing. Let's go through each of one of those. Cisco does not expect you to know each of these in detail. Again, that would be later in your CCDP studies. But that being said, they want you to understand what each of these are. Priority queuing is a queuing method that establishes four interface output queues that serve different priority levels, which are high, medium, default, and low. Unfortunately, priority queuing can starve other queues if too much data is in one queue, because higher priority queues must be emptied first before lower priority queues. Next, there is custom queuing. It uses up to 16 individual output queues. Byte size limits are assigned to each queue so that when the limit is reached, it proceeds to the next queue. The network operator can customize these limits. And custom queuing is obviously fairer than priority queuing because it allows some level of service to all traffic. But this is really a legacy solution because there are improvements in the queuing methods, which we'll talk about next. Weighted fair queuing ensures that traffic is separated into individual flows or sessions without requiring that you define access lists. Weighted fair queuing uses two categories to group sessions, high and low bandwidth. 
low bandwidth traffic has priority over high bandwidth traffic and high bandwidth traffic shares the service according to assigned weight values. Please know that weighted fair queuing is the default quality of service mechanism on interfaces below 2 megabits per second. Weighted fair queuing is not the best option in every scenario because it doesn't provide enough control in the configuration. But it is far better than the first in first out approach because interactive traffic flows that generally use small packets do get the priority they need in the software queue. As you can see in this diagram, the different weighted fair queue traffic flows are placed into different queues before entering the weighted fair queue scheduler, which will then allow them to pass to the hardware queue based upon the defined logic. If one queue fills, the packets will be dropped, but this will also be based on the weighted fair queue approach, that is, lower priority packets are dropped first, as opposed to the first in, first out approach of tail dropping. Next is class-based weighted fair queuing. It extends weighted fair queuing capabilities by providing support for modular user-defined traffic classes. Class-based weighted fair queuing lets you define traffic classes that correspond to match criteria, including ACLs, protocols, and input interfaces. Traffic that matches the class criteria belongs to that specific class, and each class has a defined queue that corresponds to an output interface. So after traffic has been matched and belongs to a specific class, you can modify its characteristics such as assigning bandwidth, maximum queue limit, and weight. As you see in the picture here, certain classes receive higher priority than other classes. As you can see here, class-based weighted fair queuing logic is based on the class-based weighted fair queue scheduler that receives information from queues defined for different forms of traffic. The traffic that does not fit any manually defined queue automatically falls into the class default queue. These queues can be assigned minimum bandwidth guarantees for all traffic classes. Class-based weighted fair queuing offers powerful methodologies for controlling exactly how much bandwidth these various classifications will receive. If it contains more than one traffic type, each individual queue will use the first in, first out method inside the hardware queue. So the network designer should not combine too many forms of traffic inside of a single queue. Considering the inefficiency of class-based weighted fair queuing when using VoIP, another quality of service technique was developed, and that is low latency queuing. Adding a priority queue to class-based weighted fair queuing will not lead to starvation because this queue is policed so that the amount of bandwidth guaranteed simply for voice cannot exceed a particular value. Since voice traffic gets its own priority treatment, the remaining traffic forms will use weighted fair queuing based on bandwidth reservation values. Unlike priority queuing, low latency queuing provides for a maximum threshold on the priority queue, and this will prevent lower priority traffic from being starved by the priority queue. Now that we've talked about queuing, let's talk about traffic shaping and policing. Traffic shaping and policing are mechanisms that inspect traffic and then take action based on the traffic's characteristics, such as DSCP or IP precedence bits set in the IP header. Traffic shaping slows down the rate at which packets are sent out an interface by matching certain criteria. Traffic shaping uses a token bucket technique to release the packets into the output queue at a pre-configured rate. So this helps eliminate potential bottlenecks by throttling back the traffic rate at the source. Traffic shaping is used on larger networks to smooth the flow of traffic going out to the provider. This is desirable for a few reasons. In provider networks, it prevents the provider from dropping traffic that exceeds the contracted rate. Now, policing is a little bit different because it tags or drops traffic depending on the match criteria. Generally speaking, policing is used to set the limit of incoming traffic into an interface, and then it will drop traffic that exceeds what the settings were. 
One example of using policing is to give preferential treatment to critical application traffic by elevating to a higher class and reducing best effort traffic to a lower priority class. The best way to compare shaping with policing is to remember that shaping buffers packets. Policing does not. It can be configured to drop packets. Our final topic is link efficiency. Within Cisco IOS, there are several link efficiency mechanisms available, as you can see here. There's LFI, which is used to reduce delay or jitter on slower speed links. Multi-link PPP, which bonds multiple links together between no two nodes, which can increase available bandwidth. And then RTP, real-time transport header compression, which, compro which provides increased efficiency for applications that take advantage of RTP on slower links. So here's what you've learned. You've received a high-level overview of quality of service. And then you learn about quality of service functions, such as classification, congestion management, link efficiency mechanisms, and then traffic shaping and policing. And I wish you the best of luck in your studies.